Welcome to JA Economics for Success, my ride on the financial roller coaster. For this lesson, you will need the following materials. Your volunteer guidebook, student table tents to write their names on, the student worksheet for the session titled My Ride on the Financial Roller Coaster. And you will also need your risk bingo cards that have been cut apart for you, as well as the risk bingo insurance cards that have already been separated for you as well in your kit. Finally, you will need to access the digital presentation for the session found at learn.ja.org. You can work with your classroom teacher to determine whether you or the teacher will be responsible for pulling up the digital presentation each time you visit the classroom. We recommend asking the teacher to have the presentation ready for you if possible. If you are teaching a JA in a day or a J in the AM event, your teachers have been encouraged to pull up the presentation before you come in to teach. To aid in preparation and facilitation, you'll see in your guidebook blue text boxes which contain JA of South Dakota session-specific teaching tips and yellow text boxes that include vocabulary terms and presentation content that's not already in the guidebook. When you go into class today, please greet the students and tell them a bit about yourself and why you chose to volunteer in their classroom if this is your first visit with the students. If this is not your first visit with the students, please redistribute their table tents as needed and remind them of what they learned in the previous lesson. The next slide contains this lesson's learning objectives. Please read these through with the students as this is what the students should know or be able to do by the end of the lesson. Take the time to hand out the student worksheet titled My Ride on the Financial Roller Coaster at this point. Students will use this worksheet to take notes on key vocabulary terms. They will take notes on a video later on in the lesson, and they will also use the worksheet to record their answers to a later activity. As you progress to the following slide, read and discuss the talking prompts from your guidebook in the slides and share relevant stories from either your personal or your professional experiences. Please note that as you progress, and you come to slides with vocabulary terms on them, that the vocabulary term slides are interactive and the word itself is the button that can be clicked to reveal the word's definition like so. Consider asking students to think about what they believe the word means before you reveal the answer to students. You may also want to have st students turn and talk with their neighbor about brainstorming what they think the word might mean. So if I was in the classroom, before I click on the card itself, what I would say is we are, our lives are filled with different types of risk. Turn and talk to a neighbor and brainstorm what you think the definition of the word risk is. And then I'd give students 10, 15, 20 seconds to talk with the shoulder partner about the word before calling on a student or more to share. And then we could reveal the definition and go on from there. Students also have the vocabulary words on their worksheets, which means that after you, re you reveal the definition, please give them a few seconds to write down the definition. They can either copy it word for word, or if it's easier for some students, they can choose to paraphrase the definition. Um, either way works, it's just what works best for the students. So please pause before you move on to allow students time to write down each of the um, vocabulary words. For the examples of personal responsibility slide being shared right now, I suggest going through each image and having students vote using either a thumbs up or a thumbs down to indicate if it is or isn't an example of personal responsibility. Select those that the students vote as responsible. And you just do that by clicking on the image on the screen as you go. You could even consider calling up a student to the board to be the one that selects the image for the class as well. Now, if you would like to, you can either hit um, submit and it will move you on to the next screen, or you can use the menu button at the side to go through those answers as well um, with the class and then just move forward without submitting your answer. 
both work. From here, we're going to go to a video that features four ways that students can mitigate risk. Please ensure that both the computer slash smart board sound is on all the way and that the sound button at the bottom of the screen is turned up all the way. So you can see here it wasn't up all the way. Please ensure both are turned up to the full volume if possible before you start the video. Um, this just ensures that students can actually hear the video. So there's two places where you do need to check for the sound and the teachers and or students can probably help you with this as well since it is their classroom technology. Now, all you have to do to get the video to play is select the blue play button in the center of the screen and it will play the video. Now, if you do not hear the video or you can't figure out the sound on the video, that's okay. You can either pause at this point and try to figure it out. You can skip through this video or you can play the video and read from the transcript found at the top right. So if I just click on this, it tells me what I should be reading. Um, the choice is yours. We will review these terms on the next slide. So I'm gonna proceed to the next slide. It has four ways of handling risk. Please note that all of these letters are clickable and that students have a matching section on the bottom of the front of their worksheet. So they have an ARTA um, where they get to record the words as you read them and review them with the students. Now, as you go through these um, and students record these words, again, give them a few seconds to write these down. They might not know how to spell, so they might be looking up at the screen and down at their paper several times for a word. Um, which is totally fine. Um, consider sharing personal examples that students can jot down to the side or encourage students um, to write down what they saw for a void on the video if you were able to watch the video and just jot down um, some ideas because they will be referring back to this um, here in a second for the next activity. Now, from here, you're gonna have students turn their worksheets over to the back um, for the next activity. This next activity can be done either independently, so every student working by themselves, or you can have students work with a partner or within a small group. The choice is completely up to you. Whatever you choose, have the students move if needed to be by their partner or group before you proceed with the activity. From here, you're gonna proceed to the next slide and you're going to read through each of the scenarios before giving students a few minutes to label each of the scenarios with what the character should do. And this is on the back side of their worksheet. As a hint, you might need to give students a hint um, that they should use one of the four words from the video, which are also written on the front side of their sheet. So they can refer back to that um, as they complete this activity. But what I would do before I let them write any answers or discuss with their groups or their partners, if that's applicable, is I would go through and click on each of the names and I would read the scenario. That way, some of our students who are either um, not native English speakers or students who it takes them a while to read, they have a chance to listen to each of the scenarios before we start the activity, which should hopefully help them be more engaged in the activity. So give the students a few minutes after you finish reading um, to select their answers. And then on the next slide, you can actually go through the answers as a class, um, either by giving the answers fully by yourself or calling on groups to tell you what they um, put as their answers for each of the scenarios. And all you have to do is click the image to get the answer to pop up. So you're gonna go through these four before moving on to the next activity. If students are incorrect or give you an incorrect answer, take a time, take some time just to answer any misconceptions and kind of tell them why maybe that wasn't the correct choice. So just make sure that you are um, correcting mistakes as they come up. Not a big deal. They are new to this. When going over the concept of insurance, consider relating the concepts to items that students currently have, such as talking about insurance for their music equipment, their phones, car insurance, and um, others like that, um, as you reveal the definition of the word. So right here again, another vocabulary term that they are going to record on their worksheets, but you can also be talking about maybe things that relate to them or um, types of insurance that you personally use yourself. 
All right, and as we move on, we have another vocabulary card, so we're gonna repeat that process. And then we have another video. So this next video talks about the different types of insurance. Consider asking students to share with a shoulder partner or the entire class something that they would insure after you watch the video. Continue to the next few slides using the prompts in your guidebook and allow the students to record definitions as they appear on their worksheet. From here, we are gonna talk a little bit about risk and we're gonna do it in a game. So this year we have risk bingo that has been provided in your volunteer materials. At this point, I would call on a couple students to help hand out the following materials. Each student is going to get their own risk bingo card and they are all different. Um, and then each student is also going to get a risk insurance card. So they look like this, but JA has cut them apart for you. So you just hand one per student. Those cards are all different. Um, so no student should have one that's exactly the same, which is good for the purposes of bingo. Um, the risk insurance card covers what students have for insurance. So they look very similar, but not every student has the same coverage. So some students might have full dental insurance, and some might not have full dental insurance on their um, insurance card. So just know that they look very similar, but they are actually different, which comes into play for this game. So once each student has a risk bingo card and a risk insurance card, students will need something to write with. Please note that when you use the first example of the free space, the warranty, that students do not need phone insurance on their insurance card in order to use the free space as they would in the actual game. You can also use this uh, to briefly mention warranties um, that are often extended to everyone, even without insurance. From here, you are ready to go into the game. Now, something to consider before you go into the classroom is in your guidebook, you have scenarios for bingo that you will read to the students. They are not numbered. My suggestion to you is to go into the guidebook prior to class and number those um, bingo prompts in your guidebook. And I would number them not in order as they appear. I would skip around a little bit just to kind of keep it interesting because we do have um, sections where they're all very similar themed uh, scenarios. So I would skip around and maybe the first section I pick one and then I move to the second section and that's where I write my two and I just go through until everything is numbered. Um, that way it just kind of keeps things fresh as you're going throughout the game. As you read the bingo prompts to students, prompt them to identify what types of insurance are needed for each of the situations before you give them the keyword. And the keyword are the words that are bolded in your guidebook. So that is something that they need to look for is the bolded word on their bingo card. You can also consider if you wanna add another layer to this game, consider prompting students to record the cost of their expenses that are not covered on their insurance plans on the back of their worksheet for the session. At the end of the activity, if time allows, have students add up the total amount of money they spent because they didn't have an insurance policy that covered the expense, and then call on a few students to share their totals with the class. If you have time, please consider to continue playing once the first student has won their bingo. You can either continue going, you can start over and have students change the way they record their answers, or you can start with a new style of bingo, such as postage stamp style or blackout style. Once bingo is finished, you're gonna to go to the next slide that reviews the idea of opportunity cost in the terms of smartphone insurance. Read each of the prompts to the students and have them share their answers with you or consider having them brainstorm their answers with a shoulder partner before clicking on each to reveal the answer. From here, you will begin to wrap up the session by reiterating the big ideas and lesson objectives and you'll go through the reflection questions on the next few slides here. If this is part of your JA in a day or JA in the AM program, please continue on to the next lesson if applicable. 
Consider allowing students a quick stretch break while you get the next lesson ready to go and pulled up on the screen. If this is your only lesson of the day or your last lesson of the day, um, please either say goodbye to the students and thank them for allowing you to be in their classroom, or if you're going to be back later on for another lesson, maybe a different day, uh, make sure you collect the student name tense as they will be reused for the next lesson. With that, we are finished with the session of JA Eco for Success, my ride on the financial roller coaster.